Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to a massive tier ranking of all of Dickens' novels. So, over the last two years I have been reading all of Charles Dickens' novels in chronological publication order, from his first published book, The Pickwick Papers, to his final unfinished novel, The Mystery of Edwin Drood. It has been massive fun um, and I've been doing this along with lots of other people um, for the Mega Dickens Read Along, which I've been running mostly on Discord and with lots of videos on this channel and it has been such a delight and such a pleasure. I listened to every book on audiobook, um, which was really lovely. I really enjoyed the audiobook experience, actually. Um, Dickens works so well on audiobook. I mostly listened to audiobooks from Audible's Dickens collection, and they were really, really good. So I've now read all of Dickens' novels many times. Um, so the one I've read the least is still The Mystery of Edwin Drood, the unfinished one, which I've read twice. Every other Dickens novel I've read at least three times, and some of them, such as Our Mutual Friend, I have read eight times. Um, I think Our Mutual Friend is the book I've read the most, um, but there's plenty of other Dickens books I've read sort of four or five, six times. Um, I love his books a lot, um, and I've read quite a lot of them a lot. But I have now read every Dickens novel, you know, within the last two years, um, so they're all feeling pretty fresh in my head, and I thought this would be a good time to do a re-ranking of all of Dickens' novels. I have ranked all of Dickens' books before on this channel, in fact, I've done it twice. <laughs> the first time I did a Dickens ranking on this channel was back in February 2016, um, many years ago when I did my What the Dickens series where I had a video on every Dickens novel. And then I also did a ranking of Dickens' books back in 2020, so four years ago. And I think actually that video of me ranking all of Dickens' books four years ago is now the most viewed video on my channel, which is kind of fun. That feels very appropriate, doesn't it? I do love Dickens a lot. But every time I read Dickens, and especially when I read them all, in chronological publication order in quick succession, my thoughts and feelings do change. So I thought it might be interesting today to do an updated ranking of Dickens' books. It's kind of interesting to think about how much my feelings on some of them have changed. I feel like one of the biggest changes is that Barnaby Rudge has shot way up in my estimation. Like Barnaby Rudge is fantastic, one of my favourite Dickens books now, and I never used to rate it that highly. Like the last time I did a Dickens ranking back in 2020, Barnaby Rudge was like a third from the bottom. Barnaby Rudge is not going to be heard from the bottom today. But I don't actually know what my ranking is for today because instead of having thought about my ranking in advance and taking you through it in this video, I'm instead going to do a tier ranking thing and I'm going to use this tier ranking to work out my rating and my ranking of Charles Dickens based on quite a few different categories. I have chosen quite a lot of categories and obviously there are 15, well 14 and a half books to talk about so we're probably going to be here for a while. I recommend that you get yourself a cup of tea and come and join me. I'm going to go over to my computer um, and I'm going to share my screen and we're going to decide my ultimate Charles Dickens ranking together. So here I have made myself on Canva a um, mega Dickens ranking chart. So here on the y-axis we have um, my sort of like ranking categories um, and I've put sort of five categories which I guess are sort of like from five down to one star. Um, so at the top, sort of five stars, um, we have perfect in every way. Then the one beneath that is really, really good. The one beneath that is interesting but flawed um, because I feel like Dickens is always interesting, even if sometimes I'm not super happy with something. Um, then the one below that is like fine but not magnificent, which I guess is maybe like a, an okay ranking, which might seem like it is above flawed, but for me, when I find Dickens interesting, that's really exciting, even if I don't find it perfect, whereas some things are just like not very exciting. And then that would be in fine but not magnificent, and that would be beneath something that's interesting but flawed for me, if that makes sense. And then at the bottom we have Charles, you've let me down, um, for when I'm not pleased with Dickens and his work. <laughs> um, and then across the x-axis here I have many, many categories, too many categories. So I started off with some simple categories such as, you know, plots, characters, themes, writing, and then I thought, oh, but humour is quite important in Dickens, and so is atmosphere. And then I thought, you usually have a central plot, but there's also quite a lot of love stories in some Dickens books, and some of the love stories are really bad, and some of the love stories are really good, and whether the love story is really good or really bad is quite like an important factor for me in whether or not I love a Dickens book, and therefore I added in love stories. And then I had to add in gender, because um, gender in Charles Dickens is like my main... Um, interest, like academic interest, I guess. That's what I did my dissertation on at university, and I'm really interested in how Dickens kind of looks at gender in his books. And I feel like there are a lot of reasons why I tend to love his later works more than his early work, um, but one reason is because um, 
the way he looks at gender is quite different in his later books, the female characters and the male characters, to be honest, everyone. It's just a lot more interesting. Um, so I had to kind of put a gender in there um, as well. And then I wanted to have what I call the balance um, because there are some Dickens books that are really, really funny, but the plot isn't so exciting. And there are some Dickens books where um, the emotion is there, but maybe there's less humour. Um, and I feel like one of the things I really value in the Dickens books that I love is having like a balance of all the different elements. Um, so I thought it might be fun to rank Dickens on the balance because that's something I really value in his books. Like my favourite of his books are the books that have like a really perfect balance of all the elements of his books that I love. Um, and then finally, I have gone for enjoyment vibes. When we were talking in the Discord server about ranking Charles Dickens, um, someone said something like, um, are you going to rank them based on categories or just based on enjoyment vibes? And I enjoyed the term enjoyment vibes. And I also thought it was important to have an element to the category ranking that was pure, just like subjective enjoyment. Sometimes a book is not as perfect as another book, but is your favourite book ever. Um, and that would rank at the top of enjoyment vibes. So we're going to go through all of Dickens's books. I've got them marked up along the bottom here um, in tiny covers because there's a lot of books, a lot of categories. And I've also just realised that I'm not going to be able to fit more than like one or two covers in each square. So I'm going to have to like put them on top of each other and it will maybe look less pretty than I imagined. But you know, that's fine. So we're going to go through all of Dickens's books and we're going to rank them um, across all of these different categories. And then at the end, I guess I'm going to assign like points or something and add everything up and see what my ultimate Dickens ranking is. And it'll be interesting to see if it is what I think it should be, if that makes sense, or if there are some books that I end up giving more points to that I'm kind of expecting to. I think it's going to take a long time, but I also think it will be kind of fun. So let's get going. I'm sorry about the reflection in my glasses. Um, even if I turn the monitor right down to its lowest, um, there's nothing I can do about it. So we're just going to live with it. So let's start off with the pick of papers. I really like the Pickle Papers, but it's not my absolute favourite. Um, in terms of the main plot, the Pickle Papers doesn't really have a plot, um, but I also think it's not kind of meant to have a plot, so I don't know whether that goes in like, Charles, you've let me down, or just like, fine but not magnificent. Mm, can I put it between the two? That's probably allowed, and then I'll give it like one and a half points when I add them up or something. Because um, it's not necessarily that the plot is bad, it's just that there isn't really a plot, and that's kind of the point. I feel like the characterization is is okay in the Pickle Papers, but it's not like the most exciting. So I'm probably going to put it in fine but not magnificent. Although there are really good characters such as Sam Weller. Okay, I'm going to put it in interesting but flawed instead, because basically I feel like most of the characters in the Pickle Papers are not very exciting, but then there is Sam Weller and I do love Sam Weller. When it comes to the themes, I just don't feel the themes of the Pickle Papers are that exciting in comparison to some of his later books, so let's put it in fine but not magnificent. When it comes to the writing, I mean Dickens's writing is always pretty good, so let's put it in really really good. Am I just gonna put all of this in like the top two for writing because Dickens's writing is just great like there's not many points where I'm like no I didn't like the words um maybe I shouldn't even have included this as a category because I think his writing is always good I mean I think it's less good in the Pickle Papers than later so maybe let's put it between the two but when it comes to the humour now we have to put it right at the top um because humour in the papers is just like wonderful and amazing. Um, atmosphere? I feel like it's not a very atmospheric book, um, the paper papers. Again, I feel like maybe it's not really trying to be atmospheric, so we'll put it in between fine but not magnificent and Charles You Let Me Down. Love stories? I mean, the love stories in the paper papers are not very exciting at all, so we'll put this in Charles You Let Me Down. I mean, again, I don't think it's really trying to be a romantic one, but it's not the best. Gender, I'm sorry Dickens, but you have let me down. All of the women in the Pickle Papers are just like fainting all the time and really boring. Actually, no, I'm gonna change my mind because I'm being silly. It does look at quite interestingly at masculinity and we have quite a lot of like different depictions of quite different um, men who are kind of interpreting masculinity in different ways. Um, but also it's kind of quite one-sided in its look at gender. And then we come to the balance. Um, and I feel like the balance isn't, amazing in the Pickle Papers. I'm probably going to put it in Charles You Let Me Down because in the Pickle Papers um, it's very good fun and it's really really funny but there's not much plot. The characters, some of them are amazing like Sam Weller but some of them are not very amazing. Um, so poor Pickle Papers is not doing very well so far but now he comes to enjoyment vibes and the Pickle Papers is, is just excellent fun um, so we have to put it up in really really good. It's not perfect in every way because as I have said through everything else in this little depiction, there's a lot of ways in which the Pickle Papers um, isn't as good as his later novels, 
but it is really great fun and it is very funny. So Oliver Twist is historically my least favourite Dickens and I'm sure it will continue to be, but let's see how I'm going to rank it. The plot, the plot is fine in Oliver Twist. Like, I don't have that many problems with the plot, but in general I feel like the subplot is more exciting than the main plot and it's not the greatest of plots. Um, when it comes to the characters, in general, I feel like the characterization in Oliver Twist is very, very weak. Like Oliver himself, I find a very boring character. Um, and I feel like a lot of the characters are quite like two dimensional, not that exciting in comparison to, you know, later Dickens books. But I do think Nancy is an incredible character and I do think Bill Sykes is an incredible character. So I'm going to put it on a level with the Pickwick Papers um, in between Charles You've Let Me Down and Fine But Not Magnificent. When it comes to the themes, um, I do think the themes are really interesting. Maybe I should have had a social criticism column. No, I've got enough. I've got enough columns. Um, but let's count social criticism within themes. The themes of Oliver Twist are really, really good. Um, so let's put it in really, really good. Um, that's why I've called that category that, because that's just something I say all the time. For the writing, I think we'll put it in interesting but flawed, because I just think it's not as strong as some other Dickens books. Humour. Oliver Twist has some funny moments, but not that many. Um, and I do think it's trying to be less humorous than the pick the papers like I feel in a way Oliver Twist was like a reaction against the pick the papers and therefore was like not funny at all I'm gonna put it in Charles you let me down because I don't feel like it's very funny when it comes to atmosphere though I think it has a pretty good atmosphere Oliver Twist um I think especially some of the London scenes and like Oliver getting involved in crime I think that's quite atmospheric love stories I mean there's not much going on in Oliver Twist again like the pick the papers I don't think it's trying to be a super romantic love story book, but because love stories is something I really like in Dickens, I'm gonna put it in Charles You Let Me Down. Gender, I'm gonna put it in interesting but flawed, basically because I feel like most of the female characters are really boring, but Nancy is quite interesting. I have complicated feelings about her, but in general I do feel like she's one of Dickens's best drawn early female characters, so we'll put it in interesting but flawed. The balance, again, like The Pick of Papers, I don't think Oliver Twist has a good balance, um, because I feel like he wrote it in reaction to the Pickwick Papers almost and he sort of stripped out his natural humour and focused a lot on the grimy gritty stuff which I like but I like more of a balance as you get more in his later books. Enjoyment vibes? Um, I'm just gonna put it right at the bottom in Charles You've Let Me Down. I should say that I love all of Dickens's books like even Oliver Twist. Actually do I love Oliver Twist? Oliver Twist is my least favourite but I have a very high opinion of Dickens so whenever I'm being rude about Dickens know that I say it with love um, and respect. I'm quite enjoying doing this tier ranking thing. I've never done it before. I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Like I feel like you're not allowed to have things between categories when you're doing tier rankings, but I don't care. It's my tier ranking and I can make my own rules. Nicholas Nickleby now. So main plot, I mean, there are some elements I like in it. Like it's sort of episodic, but some of the episodes I like more than others um, and Kate Nickleby's plot is kind of interesting in places so I think we'll put it in interesting but flawed. I kind of like the coming age story elements too that it's not like the strongest. Characterization, I think I'm going to put it in Charles You've Let Me Down. I think the characterization is not very exciting in Nicholas Nickleby. In general I feel the characterization is probably slightly better than Oliver Twist but I feel like in Oliver Twist there are some characters who I really think are great like Nancy and like Bill Sykes whereas there aren't that many in Nicholas Nickleby. I do really like Newman Noggs but I don't think Newman Dogs is enough to take Nicholas Nickleby's characterization out of the bottom category. The themes though, the themes are pretty good. Um, probably not actually as interesting as Oliver Twist in terms of the social criticism and stuff. So I think we're gonna put it in the category below Oliver Twist, but I do think the themes are relatively interesting in Nicholas Nickleby, you know, the stuff about um, schools and Smike. Oh, I just remembered Smike. No, I'm gonna have to put the characterization up. We'll move it up to above Oliver Twist because I'd forgotten about Smike. Smike is perfect in every way, um, but alas, no one else in Nicholas Nickleby is. So he can he can bring Nicholas Nickleby up to fine but not magnificent um, for characterization. Okay, writing. I think I'll just put it in interesting but flawed again um, because you know it's it's fine but it's not like Dickens at his best, is it? Humor. There's some pretty funny stuff in Nicholas Nickleby. I feel like it's less funny than. A lot of other Dickens books um, but I do feel like it has its comic moments and some of the like theatre stuff I find quite funny um, so I think let's put it in interesting but flawed because it's not the funniest but it is quite funny. Atmosphere, um, I feel like it's less atmospheric than Oliver Twist but I feel like it's more atmospheric than the Pickwick Papers. I was also forgetting characterizations that I do actually think Ralph Nickleby is quite an interesting character so 
No, I think it's fine and fine, but not magnificent. I can second guess myself all day. The love stories in the Nicholas Nickleby are really bad, though. So we're going to put you down in Charles, you let me down for the love stories. And I feel like in a way they're like even worse because I feel like Nicholas Nickleby is meant to have some good love stories in. Whereas the Pickwick Papers and Oliver Twist are not trying to as much. They have some love stories, but they're not as much of a focus. Whereas in Nicholas Nickleby, there are some love stories that are important, but they're just not great and frustrating the same for gender you can go in charles if you let me down nicholas nickleby because i feel like all of the gender stuff in it is kind of like a bit stereotyped uh um cover image on that penguin classics cover comes from a particular illustration from nicholas nickleby which i'll put on the screen now because that was the illustration i used on the front of my dissertation like on the cover um at university because i feel like it just sums up early dickens and gender the balance in terms of the balance of everything i mean Let's put it in fine but not magnificent because I feel like it has more of a mix of like plot and characters and themes than The Pickle Papers and Oliver Twist. Like I think it has more of a mix of the light and dark but I still feel like it's not the best. Enjoyment vibes, um, fine but not magnificent. By which I mostly mean I do actually enjoy it more than Oliver Twist but I just think there are better Dickens books so that's where it lives. It's fine. I feel like I'm being very harsh on Dickens, but I think that's because I just don't want everything to end up in the top two categories. And also we're starting off obviously with his early books and I know that I love his later books a lot more. The Old Curiosity Shop is an interesting one for plot. Some of the plots I absolutely love, but one plot, which is sort of the main one, I don't love as much, but I do like it. So I think let's put the plot in interesting but flawed. Characterization. I do think there are some great characters, but there are also some characterization which is not the best um or is not strong or isn't quite working so i think we'll put it in interesting but flawed for the themes i think we're going to put it in really really good because there are some really interesting themes in the old curiosity shop and you know there are some quite interesting sort of different themes in there such as themes of addiction um so i think we'll put it in really really good for the writing i mean i think let's put it yeah let's put it in between really really good and interesting but flawed because i do think the writing is is pretty good but i also think there are better dickens books later the humor I think actually there are some things that are meant to be funny in the old curiosity shop that aren't as funny as Dickens thinks they are. So I think let's put it in fine but not magnificent. Atmosphere. The old curiosity shop is pretty, pretty atmospheric actually. I feel like there are some really atmospheric scenes, especially as little Nell and her grandfather go kind of traveling about. So I think let's put this in really, really good. I think that's where it belongs. The love stories aren't necessarily like a huge, huge element of the old curiosity shop, but there is one love story in the old curiosity shop that I absolutely love and that I think is perfect in every way. So I think we're going to put it in perfect in every way. I feel like that is slightly overselling it, but I can't explain enough my love of one particular love story in The Old Curiosity Shop. So there it will stay. Gender. Um, I feel like it's getting better in The Old Curiosity Shop, but I also feel like there are some problems. When it comes to the balance, I do think The Old Curiosity Shop has a pretty decent balance between like the light and dark and like the emotion and so on. And um, so I think let's put it in between interesting but flawed and really, really good. And then enjoyment vibes. Um, I have to say that I really, really love The Old Curiosity Shop and I feel like I love it slightly more than it deserves. Like I feel like it's not necessarily as strong a book as some other Dickens novels, but I feel like I just find it really fun and there's a few characters and like um, moments that I'm just really emotionally attached to. Um, so I think I'll put it in really, really good for enjoyment vibes. And now we come to Barnaby Rudge. And as I said earlier in this video, Barnaby Rudge is the Dickens book that have gone up like the most in my estimation. And um, so Barnaby Rudge is like, yeah, gonna be taking some high spots. So the main plot in Barnaby Rudge, I think let's put it in really, really good. In general, I think the plot is fantastic, um, but there is a big time jump in the middle of it um, and a few other like fiddly, complicated things that maybe aren't perfect about it, um, but I do think in general the plot is really good. I think the characterization is great too. I'm not going to put it in the perfect in every way because I do feel like there's a few things that maybe we would get to know more about and I feel like there are later Dickens books where the characterization is stronger um, and definitely a few of the female characters in Barmy Road just still a little bit um, old school Dickens heroines um, good and beautiful and nothing besides but there are so many amazing characters in Barmy Road, Um so many fantastically drawn characters so I think it does have to go pretty high up and then I'm going to put it right in the top category for themes because the themes in Barney Raj are amazing um the way that it looks at the Gordon riots and prejudice and intolerance and how intolerance often stems from feelings of powerlessness and in social repression like I just think it's fantastically drawn in terms of the themes and then for the writing again I think Barney Raj is really great writing and some of the like riot scenes are fantastically written I think 
his writing does still improve in his later novels, but I'm going to put it between Perfect in Every Way and Really, Really Good because it is great. When it comes to the humour, Barbara Rudge is not as funny as some of his other books. I don't think it's trying to be, but now that I even think about it, I feel like there are not that many funny moments in Barney Rudge. So I kind of want to put it in fine but not magnificent, but that feels unfair on Barney Rudge because it's such an amazing book. But we're going to put it there for now. And, you know, when I come to do my final ranking, if I feel that things are not in the right order, I may end up feeling that I must move things around, but we'll see. Atmosphere. Oh, it's got a great atmosphere, has Barney Rudge. I think I'm going to put it right at the top for the atmosphere because I feel like the historical setting and like the riots and everything is so atmospheric and so well done. The love stories, mm, not so great in Barbie Brudge. Um, the love stories are really underdeveloped and like um, a little bit dull. Um, and again, sort of, you know, beautiful women um, with no personality marrying the heroes. So let's put that um, in fine but not magnificent um, because there are like one or two nice moments, but you know, it's not a patch on his later love stories, or indeed on um, the old curiosity shop. When it comes to gender, um, I sort of don't quite know where to put this because, as I said, I feel like quite a lot of the female characters in Barney Rudge are a bit um, good, beautiful, but nothing else. But it is a really, really interesting book in terms of how it looks at masculinity. Like, the way that it looks at masculinity is fascinating. Um, so I kind of... I think let's put it between interesting but flawed and really, really good, because basically I feel like it is really, really good but flawed. The balance... Um, I'm going to put it in really, really good because although, as I said, there is not as much humour in Barnaby Rudge, I do feel like it has a pretty good balance between like fast pace and not fast pace and between its different themes um, and plot lines. So I think we'll put it high up. And then for enjoyment vibes, um, I'm going to put it in between really, really good and perfect in every way because there are Dickens books I love more. But I had such a good time with Barney and Rudge this time, and I really, really loved it. It just shot up in my estimation, like, so much. I was completely blown away by Barney and Rudge on this reread, so that was exciting. Okay, this grid is already getting quite full. Am I going to even be able to make sense of where I've put everything at the end um, when I come to try and count things up? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's fun. Martin Chuzzlewit, um, the plot is interesting but flawed, I think I'm going to say, because I feel like there's some really interesting elements to the plot, um, such as this big, like, sprawling family and such as the trip to America, but I feel like the plot doesn't necessarily hang together that well. Actually, maybe it needs to go between fine but not magnificent and interesting but flawed, because I feel like it's quite flawed, <laughs> though it is quite interesting. Characterization. I feel like there are quite a lot of good characters in Barnaby Rudge, so let's put it between really, really good and interesting but flawed, because I feel like there are some great characters, but there are also some characters who are less well-developed and less interesting. I feel like the themes in Martin Chuzzlewit are quite interesting, like a lot of it is about kind of selfishness and things like that, but I, I feel like it's not quite as well done as some other books. So basically I'm really indecisive is I think what we're learning from doing this tier ranking. Let's put it, let's put it in interesting but flawed. And then for the writing, um, it's gonna go between really, really good and interesting but flawed again, like many things, um, because I'm very indecisive. The humour, it is really funny, to be fair. Martin Chuzzlewit is very, very funny. I don't think it's as funny as the Pickle Papers, so we're gonna put it in really, really good. I feel like the atmosphere is fine in Martin Chuzzlewit, but I feel like it's not a book I think of as being that atmospheric. The love stories, um, well, do I count an unrequited love story as a love story? I think I probably do, and the unrequited love story in Martin Chuzzlewit is excellent. Tom Pinch has my heart forever, um, and I do feel like some of the requited love stories are okay. They're not as good as the unrequited love story though, so maybe let's put it in between interesting but flawed and really really good, because I feel like the unrequited love story is very good, but the love stories that are requited are not very good. Mm, no, I'm gonna put it in interesting but flawed. I don't think the unrequited love story is enough to make up for the weak elements of the other love stories. Gender, I think let's put it in interesting but flawed because I basically feel like quite a lot of female characters are still a bit like 2D, but there is the beginning of an interest in power dynamics between men and women and the damage they could cause within Martin Chuzzlewit, which is quite interesting. And I also kind of think that Martin Chuzzlewit, like as a character, his kind of, journey um is quite interesting in terms of a sort of masculinity coming of age story but i don't think it's necessarily as detailed as um some of the other books we have by dickens so i think we'll leave martin chaswick there and then um we come to the balance so it is very funny and it does have lots of plot and it does have 
a real like good Dickensian feel to it. So I actually feel like the balance is pretty good in Martin Chuzzlewit. Um, like I don't necessarily think that everything about the book is perfect, but I feel like the balance of all the different elements is pretty good. So I'm gonna put it in really, really good. And then for enjoyment vibes, I think we're gonna put it in interesting but flawed. I do really like Martin Chuzzlewit and it is really fun, but I definitely don't feel like I like it as much as the Pick the Papers or um, the old curiosity shop and I feel like I didn't get quite as much out of it on this reread as I had previously like I feel like it's probably one that has gone down slightly in my estimation so we're gonna leave it there and now I come to Dombey and Son which I love a lot Dombey and Son's gonna be ranking highly do I want to put it in perfect in every way for everything kind of the main plot is perfect in every way <laughs> The characterization is amazing. The themes are actually the best. I almost feel like the themes are so good that I shouldn't rank it quite so highly for characterization. No, let's put it between really, really good and perfect in every way for characterization because I think there are some amazing characters, but there are some characters who maybe could be developed a little bit more. We thought I had got all these images the same size, but Dombey and Son is apparently bigger by a tiny bit. Anyway, I think let's put the characterization in between because, you know, we need some space for our mutual friend to win everything. The writing is, is so good in Dombey and Son though. Let's put it straight away at the top. And the humour is good. The humour is, it's not as funny as the Pickle Papers. It's not trying to be. But we'll put it between the perfect in every way and really, really good. Oh, but then some of the humour is so good. No, actually I'm going to put it right at the top because Captain Cuttle is so funny. Do I think it's the atmospheric book? I think it's a really wonderful novel, but I, I feel like... No, I feel like there are some really atmospheric bits, but... I don't think that it's as atmospheric as some other Dickens novels. So I think we're gonna put it in between really, really good and perfect in every way. For the love stories, I think I'm gonna put it in really, really good. Am I? I'm gonna put it in between because I feel like the one thing in Dombey and Son that maybe we don't see as much of is the love stories. Although there is Mr. Toots and his unrequited love, which does make me want to push it up higher. Now I'm gonna put it firmly in really, really good because it is really, really good. Gender, we'll put it right at the top because the way Dolby and Sun looks at gender and masculinity and femininity and sort of toxic masculinity and kind of what gender means within Victorian society, the position of men and women, like all of that stuff in Dolby and Sun is just the best. It's great. The balance, the balance in Dolby and Sun is amazing. Um, and for enjoyment vibes, Dolby and Sun goes right at the top. <laughs> so Dolby and Sun is, is so good. As I said, my second favorite Dickens. Um, I just love it a lot. Now we come to David Copperfield. How are we gonna rank David Copperfield? The main plot in David Copperfield, I'm gonna put it in really, really good. I feel like there's some wonderful elements in David Copperfield, but I don't love the plot as much as Dolby and Sun, but it is a great coming of age story. Characterization, I feel like it is really good. Um, do I feel like it's better than Dombey and Son in terms of characterization? No, let's also put it in between really, really good and perfect in every way because I feel like some of the characters do great up on me. But I also feel like the characterization is really, really interesting, David Copperfield. Um, actually, I'm going to move it down to really, really good because I'm very indecisive and I feel like there is the problem of Dora. But I also feel like David as a character is so interesting to be drawn and there's so many amazing side characters too. For the themes, I think let's put it in really, really good. Um, there's a lot of really interesting themes in David Copperfield, but I think there are other novels that I find more thematically interesting. For um, the writing, I think I'm going to put it right at the top with Dombey and Son. Like, I feel like the writing is amazing in David Copperfield. This is when Dickens was really coming into his own in terms of his writing. The humour, the humour is pretty good, isn't it? I'm going to move Dombey and Son down. And I'm going to put David Copperfield above it because I think it is funnier, but they're not as funny as the Pickle Papers. I'm going to put it in between. Very indecisive. Atmosphere. I feel like it's a less atmospheric novel than some of the others, but actually some of the stuff by the sea is really atmospheric. So let's put it in really, really good. When it comes to the love stories, um, I get quite frustrated with the love stories in David Copperfield. So I think I'm actually going to put this in between Fine But Not Magnificent and Charles You've Let Me Down. In general, the thing that drags... David Copperfield down a bit for me is the love stories and also the gender stuff but I do actually think he's trying to do some really interesting things with gender but I just don't think they're quite working so I'm going to put it in between fine but not magnificent and interesting but flawed. For the balance I'm going to put it in really really good because I do feel like the balance in David Copperfield is pretty great between all these different elements. When it comes to enjoyment vibes we're going to put this probably in interesting but flawed or maybe between really really good and interesting but flawed. So I feel like Previously, I have always had a really great time with David Copperfield, and I did enjoy it on this read, but I definitely didn't enjoy it as much as I have done previously. I feel like it definitely went down a little bit in my estimation on the Mega Dickens read long, so actually I'm gonna move it down one, because as I said, very indecisive. And now we come to uh, Bleak House, which is truly wonderful. I think for 
main plot, Bleak House has to go right at the top because I feel like the plotting is so good in Bleak House um, and the way the different elements and Esther's plot and um, the kind of third person narrative weaves together, I just think it's fantastic. Um, I feel like it has to go pretty hard for characterization too actually. I feel like the characterization in Bleak House is fantastic and the themes are really interesting too. At this rate I feel like Bleak House is gonna end up accidentally beating Dombey and Son which it isn't meant to but I do feel like the themes in Bleak House are really interesting and the way that it looks at kind of chancery and the law and things like that is so well done. In terms of the writing as well let's just put Bleak House at the top. Let's just accept that Bleak House is one of Dickens' best novels because it is fantastic and I also feel like the unique qualities of the writing are really interesting in Bleak House, like the way he plays with form, which actually has made me thinking I'm going to put David Copperfield down slightly and maybe even Dombey and Son to between because I actually feel like none of them have like an interesting, unique thing in the way that Bleak House does. Like Bleak House is Dickens trying something different and the writing is absolutely Dickens at its best. For humour, Bleak House does have some funny moments, um, but I feel like it doesn't have as much. I feel like it's not trying to be as funny um, as some of his earlier books are, but I don't quite know where to put it. Let's put it up here in really, really good because I do feel like there are some elements that are really funny. The atmosphere in Bleak House though is fantastic. Um, there are so many atmospheric moments um, throughout the novel. I feel like the atmosphere in Bleak House has done so well. The atmosphere of London and the countryside and all the differences between them, it's very, very effective. I also really enjoy the love stories in Bleak House. You know what, I'm gonna put Bleak House right at the top for love stories as well because I think the love stories in Bleak House are also done very well. I also feel like Bleak House is quite interesting in the way it looks at gender, um, but I feel like there are other novels that look at it more interestingly, so I think we're going to put it in really really good. The balance is really good in Bleak House. I think this probably goes up here with Dombey and Son because the balance between all its different elements um, is just done so well and it's so wonderful. When it comes to enjoyment vibes, I think I don't love it quite as much as Dombey and Son, so let's put it between the two but it is such a fantastic, wonderful read. Next we come to Hard Times. Um, so Hard Times, I think for plot, we're gonna put it in interesting but flawed because I feel like the plot is really interesting in Hard Times, but it's quite a short novel and doesn't necessarily have the time to really like delve into the plot as much as in some other Dickens novels. Like the thing I love best in Dickens' novels is like his really long novel with a lot of different characters and a lot of different plot threads all weaving together. And because that, isn't really what you get in Hard Times. I therefore feel like I don't love the plot as much. The characterization in Hard Times is pretty good, um, but I feel like, again, because it's a shorter novel, you don't necessarily get as much time with the characters. So I think we're gonna put it here. When it comes to the themes though, I think Hard Times gets to, to live right at the top with this very crowded space of books um, because I just feel like Hard Times is, is done so well and then it's themes of kind of industrialization and fact versus fancy. Like it's so fascinating. When it comes to the writing, I think we'll put it in between really really good and perfect in every way. Um, I don't think it's as interestingly written as Bleak House but I do think it's really well written. The humour, um, I think let's put it in interesting but flawed because I, I don't feel like Hard Times is that funny and I also feel like some of the humour that's meant to be there is about like the um, circus performers and it doesn't really land that well. In fact I'm gonna put it in fine but not magnificent because I don't think that it is that funny. Although I feel like quite a lot of Dickens' later books aren't that funny and I've put them higher up than they should be but it's fine, it's all fine. The atmosphere is pretty good in hard times. Like I feel like we get quite a good sense of what it's like in Coke Town. So let's put that in really, really good. The love stories in hard times, um, I'm gonna put it in interesting but flawed, am I? Between interesting but flawed and really, really good. I mean, the love stories are less important and they're less like conventional, but I think in a way that makes them more interesting. And there are some interesting elements in the sort of love story elements within hard times. I'm gonna put it in really, really good for gender because I feel like Louisa Gradgrind's story is quite interesting um, and I also feel like the kind of exploration of masculinity through James Harthouse and um, Tom Gradgrind are quite interesting. The balance in Hard Times, I think I'm going to put it as interesting but flawed because I feel like in a way it's quite a short novel and therefore doesn't have the time to like get the balance in the way that I want it to. It doesn't have the balance that I love in a Dickens novel because it's quite short. For enjoyment vibes, um, I think I'm going to put it in really really good because I do really really enjoy it. And I do think it's a great book. Maybe I enjoy it less than The Pickle Papers and The Old Curiosity Shop. Is that true? No. Let's keep it in really, really good. I think it probably does kind of belong there. And now we come to Little Dorrit and I love Little Dorrit a lot. However, saying that I love Little Dorrit a lot, I do feel like the main plot is not its strongest point. Like there are really interesting things about it, but I feel like 
it was interesting reading Little Dorrit along with other people for the Mega Dickens read along because a lot of people were struggling with the fact that it doesn't have that much of a plot. So I think I'm going to put it in interesting but flawed for the plot. Even though I think this is going to drag Little Dorrit down when it shouldn't because Little Dorrit is the best. I don't know. But for characterization, it can go right at the top because I think it has truly fantastic characterization in. Like, I think Little Dorrit has my favourite protagonists in any Dickens book. Like, I always love so many minor characters in Dickens, but in terms of, like, the protagonists, Little Dorrit might be my favourite. And I also think it has amazing themes. Um, you know, the way that it looks at imprisonment and money um, and so on. It's just so well done. The writing in Little Dorrit is great as well. Um... I think let's put it up with Bleak House because I do feel like this is Dickens really coming into his own by this point in his career and it's wonderfully written. I also feel like Little Dorrit is really funny. Um, I'm going to put the humour in perfect in every way because I feel like there are certain characters like Mr Panks who are just hilarious and I feel like some of the humour really really lands for me in Little Dorrit. I'm trying to think about the atmosphere. I feel like let's put it in between really really good and perfect in every way because I don't feel like it's as atmospheric a novel as Bleak House but I do feel like it has great atmosphere of the Marshall Sea and sort of um, the creaky house of the Glenhams um, and so many other elements to it too. And for the love stories it goes right at the top. To be honest this is actually making me want to put Old Curiosity Shop and um, Bleak House in between um, really, really good and perfect in every way because their love stories are not as great as um, Little Dorrit, which has the best love story in all of Dickens and is amazing. When it comes to gender, um, I think let's put this in between really, really good and perfect in every way. Actually, no, I'm just going to put it in perfect in every way um, because I really love the way Little Dorrit looks at gender and I feel like both Amy Dorrit and Arthur Clennam um, as the kind of two main central characters are both kind of like doing interesting things with Victorian ideas of gender and both of them kind of um, subvert Victorian ideas of gender in quite an interesting way. Um, and there's also a lot of minor characters who do that too um and i feel like the way dickens looks at gender through little dorrit and the way he especially looks at masculinity through arthur clennam is fascinating so that goes right at the top there for the balance um i think i'm going to put this in really really good because basically as i said i love little dorrit so much and i get so much out of it and there's so much i love about it but i do feel like um maybe the plot doesn't have as much of a role as it should do it has less of a plot but i think what is there is really good and for me the plot is like the love story and the love story is really good but that is more important than the other plot strands so I'm gonna leave it in really really good though I feel like that's a controversial decision and for enjoyment vibes it goes in perfect in every way because as I said I just love it so much and I'm so attached to it and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy everything about it. Now we come to A Tale of Two Cities which is a Dickens book I feel kind of complicatedly about. Um, when it comes to the main plot like I can't deny that the main plot is really strong um, I'm going to put it in between. No, I'm just going to put it in really, really good because I do think it's quite a short novel and maybe there are some elements that it would be good to see more of or, or know more about. I basically feel like the ending is Dickens's best ending, but that doesn't mean that everything in the beginning is Dickens's best beginning, if that makes sense. Um, and now we come to characterization, and I'm going to put Tale of Two Cities really low down for characterization. Now I'm going to put it in between Interesting but Flawed and Fine but Not Magnificent because basically I think about three quarters of the cast are not very well developed and not very interesting figures at all and then there's like two maybe three amazing characters but I feel like a lot of the characterization is sort of half-baked and underdone in A Tale of Two Cities. In fact I'm going to move it down to fine but not magnificent. I just don't think Sidney Carton and Madame Defarge and Jarvis Laurie are enough to make up for the very blandness of Charles Darnay and Lucy Minette. I'm very sorry. I know a lot of people love A Tale of Two Cities and it's their favourite, but I just I just find the characterization so much weaker in that one. I do think the themes are really interesting though. I'm going to put it in really, really good. I actually feel like it has a lot of similar themes to Barnaby Rudge and I feel like Barnaby Rudge um, does them better. I assume Barnaby Rudge is somewhere under here. <laughs> I've lost track of what I'm doing. Yes, Barnaby Rudge is somewhere at the top. When it comes to the writing, um, I do think there's some great writing in A Tale of Two Cities, um, but because not as much of that writing is spent on the characterization as I would like. I'm not going to put it at the top spot, but we'll put it in really, really good. For the humour, I'm going to put A Tale of Two Cities in Charles, You've Let Me Down. I feel like I've been quite generous on the books where they're not meant to be hugely funny, but the thing about A Tale of Two Cities is that I think there are some characters who are meant to be funny. I think especially like Jeremy Cruncher, but I just don't find him funny at all. And I feel like maybe it's because he feels really out of place in A Tale of Two Cities, but I feel like the one humorous element Dickens was trying to go for just doesn't land at all. So I think that's going to go right at the bottom for that. The atmosphere though in Tale of Two Cities is, is pretty great. Um, so let's put that in between really, really good and perfect in every way. When we come to the love stories, 
I'm gonna put this in fine but not magnificent. There is a good unrequited love story in there, but like the central requited love story is not very exciting at all, so we're gonna put that fairly low on that. When it comes to gender, I sort of don't know where to put a Tale of Two Cities for this because I feel like Lucy Minette is a really underdone character who feels like a return to Dickens's early heroines where she is good and beautiful and nothing else and a bit sort of like childlike even when she's in her 30s. Um, but I also feel like Madame Defarge is fascinating um, and I also feel like some of the look at masculinity through a character like Sidney Carton who sort of feels like he's failing the masculine ideal, um, he is quite interesting. So maybe let's put it in between fine but not magnificent and interesting but flawed. When it comes to the balance, I'm gonna put fine but not magnificent. Dickens was going for something slightly different here, but every now and then he throws in like comic elements like Jeremy Cruncher that feel like they belong in a different book. So it's not just that the balance isn't the balance that I like in a Dickens book, but also the balance isn't quite working when he does try and balance things. When it comes to enjoyment vibes, um, I'm gonna put it in interesting but flawed because I think that's my main feeling about A Tale of Two Cities basically um, is that it is really interesting but it is flawed um, and I just don't love it as much as other Dickens books but there we go. Okay now we get to Great Expectations which is gonna be a difficult one to rank because basically I feel like there are lots of Dickens books that I love more but I kind of think it is the best. Like when we come to the main plot like it is kind of perfect in every way isn't it? When we come to the characterization it is kind of perfect in every way. <laughs> um, when we come to the themes, like, no, I think there are other ones that are maybe more thematically interesting. Is that true? Let's put it in between. The writing is fantastic in Great Expeditions. Let's put it right at the top. The humour is so good in Great Expeditions. Um, I just, I just think Great Expeditions is absolutely hilarious and the atmosphere is amazing in Great Expeditions. The love story element in Great Expeditions is so good and it's not necessarily a super conventional love story. There's a lot of complexity within it, but I feel like Pippin and Estella's relationship is very much at the heart of the book and is exceptionally well drawn. So Great Expeditions is more in the lead than it should be. And then it comes to gender. I feel like Great Expeditions has a lot of really interesting female and male characters and I also feel like Pip's kind of coming of age story is really tied up in masculinity and sort of Victorian ideas of masculinity as well. This idea that he wants to be a gentleman and how that might differ from being a man um, and how the different like male role model figures in his life um, don't live up to what he wants to be. I know that's a lot to do with class as well as gender but I do feel like all that stuff is really interesting but also it's not as fascinating as Dombey and Son or Little Dorrit on that front I don't think so let's put it in between perfect in every way and really really good. I think the balance is pretty amazing and great expectations too like the balance of the humour and the dark stuff is really good um and I do love it and it really upsets me whenever they adapt it to screen and take out all the humor because it's a really funny book so yeah let's put it up high for the balance for enjoyment vibes I'm gonna put it in really really good because basically I feel like Great Expectations is in a way perfect like I kind of feel like it is Dickens's best novel but it is not my favorite there are four that I love more maybe five um so I kind of feel like it shouldn't be at the top, but I also do love it. It's also a Dickens book that has really grown on me. Like the more I've reread and reread Great Expectations, the more I love it. And I also feel like when I was younger, I had a lot of difficulty with Pip as a character. I found him so frustrating because he's very naive and foolish a lot of the time. And I feel like when I was in my teens and Pip was in his teens, I was very angry with him for being so foolish because I was like, I'm young and I'm not that foolish. But now that I am like, you know, 31 and Pip is like in his late teens, early twenties, I now forgive Pip for all his foolishness because he's so young. So I now like it a lot more than I used to. Now we come to our mutual friend. Shall I just put it in the top category for everything? Yes. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna put, it for plot in between really really good and perfect in every way because I feel like there's one plot element that I'm each your friend that I kind of accept is not perfect but I also still love it anyway. For characterization we're going to put it right at the top like my three favorite characters in all of literature my three favorite characters in Dickens um are Jenny Wren, Bradley Headstone and Lizzie Hexham. Like I think they're so well drawn and they're all in our mutual friend. Um, the themes are amazing, like the way it looks at money and rubbish and class and gender and so much more. It's just fantastic in our mutual friend. I also think it contains some of his absolute best writing, like some of his best scenes are in our mutual friend without a doubt. Um, and it is also really funny, like there are so many amazingly hilarious um, bits in our mutual friend and some of the comic characters are fantastic and I also think there are lots of characters like Jenny Wren who provide like both sharp humour and just 
so many other amazing elements and all the sort of social satire and pod snappery and all that stuff is fantastic too. I also love the atmosphere, everything about the River Thames and the dust mounds, like it's such an atmospheric novel. And I also think the love stories in it are absolutely cracking um, and really well done. So, you know, I'll meet your friend as I thought it would it's just going to take the top spot of everything and yeah gender our mutual friend looks at gender in such an interesting way there's so many interesting characters and it looks at gender power dynamics interestingly and lizzie hexham is the best female character dickens ever wrote um and there's lots of like women who work for themselves independently in a way that you don't see that much in literature from dickens's time and dickens uses bradley headstone and eugene rayburn and fascination fledgeby and various other characters to look at masculinity really interestingly i also feel like the balance in our mutual friend is perfect like the balance of the humor and the dark uh, stuff and the grimy gritty stuff and the emotional stuff is just perfect and for enjoyment vibes it just goes um beyond perfect in every way my emotional attachment to our mutual friend cannot be countered it is fantastic but finally we come to the mystery of everyone druid and i was really hesitant about whether or not to include this because this book is unfinished so there's certain things that we can never know about the mystery of everyone druid but i also think it's fantastic and i felt like it would be a shame not to talk about it there's a bit of me that thinks that if the mystery of everyone druid had been finished it would be my favorite novel of all time it would be better than our mutual friend maybe because there's some elements from our mutual friend that he takes into the mystery of Edwin Drood some elements that I really love in our mutual friend and does really interesting things with um so how do I rank this it's very hard to put the mystery of Edwin Drood anywhere for plot because I basically feel like the plot would be fantastic but obviously we don't actually know what the ending of it was so I'm gonna put it in really really good I don't think I can say it's perfect in every way when it is half a book um but I feel like it might have been perfect in every way but without knowing what the mystery was and without knowing how Dickens was gonna solve it it's very hard to place it higher but for characterization I think it has to go right at the top because the characterization in the mystery of Edwin Drood is fantastic Rosa and Edwin are really interesting characters Neville is setting up to be a really interesting character Mr Grugius um like ranks up there with Jenny Wren and Lizzie Hexham and Bradley Hudson is one of my favorite characters in all of Dickens I adore him and John Jasper is fascinating and I so wish Dickens had been able to finish his story I also feel like the themes are really interesting again maybe we don't really know what the focus of the book will be and what themes will become more important later so I'm going to put that between Really, really good and perfect in every way then i'm going to put it right at the top for the writing because the writing in the mystery of Edwin drood is fantastic there is some great humor in Edwin drood but i don't think it is as funny as some other books um a lot of the humor that i'm thinking of comes from deputy who is a ridiculous character who i very much enjoy um so we're going to put that in really really good it's very atmospheric though um really atmospheric novel is it as atmospheric as bleak house and our mutual friend no let's put it in between really really good and perfect in every way um because I do think there is a great atmosphere. I'm going to put it in really, really good for the love stories because, again, that's very hard to judge um, when it's an unfinished book, but I feel like the way they were going would be really, really interesting. And I feel like the kind of dynamic between Rosa and Edwin is dealt with very well. These two young people who are engaged and have been for a really long time and maybe aren't that well suited, like I feel like the way that's dealt with is really, really interesting. I'm going to put this between really really good and perfect in every way for gender because I feel like it's hard to know what Dickens was doing you know without knowing the ending but I feel like both Edwin and Neville are quite interesting characters to look at in terms of masculinity so is Jasper um and Rosa and Helena and Landless are really interesting characters when it comes to the balance um again it, this is hard to judge without having the whole book I think we're going to put it in really really good because so far in the half we have it feels like it was shaping up to be really really interesting with a really interesting balance of the dark stuff and the lighter stuff um and the more cheerful stuff i mean it's quite a dark book but i also feel like it's got enough pause and relief throughout that and mr grudeless is a very humorous character as well actually i'm gonna change my humor ranking because i've remembered how funny mr grudeless is so it's gonna get a bit higher then enjoyment vibes um I'm gonna have to put it in interesting but flawed for enjoyment vibes basically because I feel like I have rarely enjoyed a book as much as I enjoyed the first half of the mystery of Evan Drood but it's also like deeply deeply upsetting that it's unfinished and so it's such an enjoyable reading experience to read it and then it's such like a um devastating experience to finish it and be like oh where's the other half of this book that would have been the best book ever um so that's an interesting but flawed reading experience i would say so there we go i have ranked all of dickens's books and i have a big mess now that i need to clear up so i'm gonna <laughs> work out what i have given books and where i've assigned them and then we're gonna do a big ranking based on how many points everything got i think we're gonna do like yeah one point further bottom then two three four five and then the ones in between will get like a half point i feel like this is gonna be such a mess so I'm back to do my final ranking of 
all of Dickens' novels. I have added up all my scores and I'm going to see what we have. So in last place, we have Oliver Twist. No surprise there. Then next we have um, Nicholas Nickleby. Again, no surprise there. I feel like that's been my ranking for a long time. Then um, at number 13, I have The Paper Papers, um, which seems a shame because I do love The Paper Papers, but I basically feel like it's the best on humour and like not the best on most other things. And then next I have put um, A Tale of Two Cities, which feels correct for me. Um, I do think it's got some wonderful elements, but in general it's not my favourite Dickens. Um, and then next up we've got Martin Chuzzlewit. Again, that feels, that feels about right to me. Um, and then we've got The Oracle Shop coming in at number 10. Um, and then at number 11, we've got David Copperfield. Um, so, so far, this is feeling like as I would expect it to feel. After David Copperfield, we then have Hard Times um, at number eight, which again, that, that feels kind of okay to me. Um, and then we have Barnaby Rudge at number seven. I feel like Barnaby Rudge kind of should be higher than number seven. After Barnaby Rudge, um, we have The Mystery of Edwin Drood. And I don't know how much The Mystery of Edwin Drood should really be in this ranking because it is an unfinished novel. I love it, I wanted to include it, but to be honest, I kind of feel like The Mystery of Evan Drood has to be number zero. Like it has to be outside of the ranking, which would make Barley Rudge number six, which feels more accurate to my estimation of it. Um, and then after that, um, the next one I ranked um, was Little Dorrit, which um, I'm sad to see in fifth place because I consider it my third favorite Dickens book, um, but we'll talk a bit about the final ranking at the end. Um, and then the next two, um, three and four, these both had like the exact same scores. Um, so we have tied for the next two places, um, Bleak House and Dombey and Son. Uh, Where's Dombey and Son gone? Here we are. Um, and then in second place, the book that I gave the second highest rating to was Great Expectations, which is not correct. Um, and in first place, of course, is Our Mutual Friend. We knew Our Mutual Friend was going to be in first place. Um, so in terms of how my ranking is looking, I feel like Great Expectations is in the wrong place. Basically, like I said, I do feel like it's kind of Dickens' most perfect novel, but I don't love it the most. So even though like technically maybe it's Dickens' second best book, by which I mean maybe it's actually his best, but I love Our Mutual Friend more. But I actually feel like it belongs in fifth place and Dombey and Son belongs in second place and Bleak House belongs in fourth place and Little Dorrit belongs in third place. But that's obviously not the ranking that came out of my um, spreadsheet and my tier ranking. So what is the correct ranking? I don't know. I don't think I have an answer for that, um, but maybe it's fair to say that Our Mutual Friend is my favourite Dickens book, but maybe Great Expectations is his best. Or maybe Dombey and Son is my second favourite Dickens book, but maybe Great Expectations is his second best. But I feel like how I rearrange it now more accurately um, relates to how I would really rank them. But Maybe I secretly love Bleak House more than Little Dorrit, and maybe I secretly love Great Expectations more than nearly all the rest of Dickens' books. Who knows? Anyway, my camera is flashing at me to tell me that I'm out of battery, so <laughs> that is all for now. I hope this video hasn't been too long and rambly, but do let me know down in the comments what are your favourite Dickens' books, where would you rank his books. That's all for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.